Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlene. Thanks for wandering by. So my mood has shifted already <laughs> and I haven't, I didn't plan to make a, like a part two of this video following the mood, but my mood shifted like, you know, like it does for most people. Um, but also, like I've said before, I'm a Gemini and I'm, you know, perimenopausal. <laughs> so the moods shift faster, um, maybe. So anyway, um, the mood and now is a cozy mood and cozy, we'll see, I've got my coffee um, again and I'm gonna try not to edit this video as well just so it can be a little bit more chatty and, and whatnot, um, which is hard for me to do. <laughs> um, well, not hard for me to be chatty, but hard for me not to edit. Anyway, so <clears throat> the mood is cozy and cozy to me, it's like, uh, let me think how to explain it. Because I, it's not, so, I, so I'm recognizing that my moods are shifting because of this time of year. We're in September. It's not like seasonal because like I've mentioned before, I live in South Florida, so seasons are not like a thing, except right now there's been a lot of thunderstorms. So that's, I mean, it's definitely a rainy season. Afternoon thunderstorms are a thing in the summer, you know, but it's lots of thunderstorms, hurricane season, that kind of thing. But so it makes you want to like, <laughs> what's the, the phrase that Floridians and people that are used to doing, uh, dealing with hurricane season is hunker down. So it's like, oh, doggy's barking because people are walking by or he's growling. I don't know if you heard him. Anyway, um, you hunker down, you get cozy, you stay, you know, you stay inside and so there's like cozy decks and, and stuff to talk about right now. So first of all, my coffee, the mood for the creamer, the flavor right now is caramel. So I have, oh, I didn't grab the creamer to show you, but I've been, yeah, I switched creamers. <laughs> Normally I just do like regular, just straight up, no real, no real flavor. Um, but sometimes I get in the mood and it's not pumpkin spice mood quite yet for me. Like I do that sometimes, but right now it's caramel. Um, yeah, and that's, that's the, that's the coffee flavor vibe caramel. It's, you know, warm, that warm kind of, you know, yellow coppery. That's the, that's the color. Well, yeah. And my, and my nails are matching just like before with my dark academia, dark mood. My current nail polish, I brought it out. I brought that out to show you. I mean, I'm wearing it, but it's, um, it's moon cat. And this is, uh, let's see the last time I did this, it was like out of focus, but whatever it's, um, dark horse. So it's this like copper brown, like shimmery vibe. So pretty. And yeah, that's, you know, it's like cozy for me is not necessarily like getting warm, but it's that warmth, the end of the summer, it's thunderstorms and being inside. And there's a little bit of like a melancholy to my cozy. And it's not, you know, it's not anything serious. It's just kind of just the vibe, right? It's a melancholy vibe. And so speaking of flavors and food, also, so this is um, Sasson Goya, <laughs> and I'm Cuban. Well, my parents are from Cuba, and I, but I grew up um, in the States. I speak Spanish, but like not, I mean, not super fantastically fluently, but I definitely speak Spanish. Sasson Goya is like a staple, um, you know, spice and I've been, I'm, when it's, when it's thunderstorm season, when it's rainy and I love soup and there's, but a specific soup and often I put, I guess maybe it's not true soup because I put my soup over rice a lot, but that's just the thing because I'm Cuban and I eat a lot of rice, <laughs> but in any case, there's a soup that's like, I don't, I, I don't know what it's 
like I don't know what the proper name for it is, but it's like, it's a garbanzo soup. So garbanzos, chickpeas. Um, so it's got chickpeas, garbanzos. I can't call them chickpeas, that feels wrong. <laughs> They're garbanzo beans. And there's chorizo in it. There's um, like pork belly. And I don't know. I can't even remember lots of other the flavorings because I don't I don't make often make it. I do get it canned or my mom or my grandmother used to make. But um, we use sazon goya in like a lot of dishes, and it's because it has um, saffron in it. It gets um, it makes everything like this, you know, warm. Well, like my like my candle color, so it's like an orangey warm color so it's sort of you know stains everything that like orange red yellow or you know um so that garbanzo soup has been just bringing me <laughs> the most cozy comforting vibes when it's raining so that's definitely part of the vibe these guys and the coffee um i've also been listening to music I didn't bring this up. I didn't mention the like the dark vibe music from the last video, but um, the vibe, the music vibe is is sad boy, <laughs> sad boy music, <laughs> um, and it's, I'm laughing because my daughter says <laughs> she prefers listening to daddy's music, which is more like rock and classic rock and. Um, even metal, which she likes too, but, and mommy's music, my music is, she's like sad boy music, <laughs> which I was talking about in the last video too. Um, if you didn't see it, you can check it out. I'll leave a link below. Um, I was talking about being emo, which is not a term that I ever really use, but if, you know, it, it's the right term for sure. But, um, sad, I think, I think Dark Academia felt more like sad girl <laughs> and the cozy vibes are more like sad boy. So it's like, what have I been listening to? So um, some random like stuff from when I was in college, like uh, Morphine, um, Cure for Pain. Uh, I wish I could play clips of the mu <laughs> music. I'm not gonna sing to you. Um, Morphine, American Music Club. So this is like, um, you know, Jeff Buckley, uh, and then more like older sisters like Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, Leonard Cohen, uh, what else? Like, so there's a lot of sad boy music, um, even some newer stuff. Oh, oh, and Sting, but not like, not the police, Sting. There's the, the album, is it, the album is Mercury Falling, and I love that album. Uh, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of very sad, haunting, sting music, too. There's a whole album that he did that's um, kind of like a grief album where he, it was about his, after his father died. The Soul Cages? I think that's the one. <laughs> you guys probably aren't, like, huge sting fans out there. Um, but it's not like that, like, gritty, grungy like alternative, you know, Pearl Jam Nirvana vibe. That's a that's a bit of a different vibe. This is more like a like indie but singer songwriter, but like deep, you know, raspy, <laughs> hosier, maybe a little hosier in there. Sad boy, yeah, definitely sad boy music. And I did I even I haven't really created a playlist, but I've been sort of just flipping to those particular songs like yeah, um like last night we were listening to Leonard Cohen and Tom Waits, which is like, you know, oh my gosh, right? Definitely lots of deep, you know, raspy voice kind of deal. And my voice is apparently matching that right now. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so that, I mean, that's the vibe with what, like, the foods, the, fl it's like the flavor, right? You know, it's the, <laughs> it's the sasson, right, um, of the time. It's the flavor. Uh, and 
I've also been reading, oh, okay, I guess, well, I won't grab the book. I'll just put the book cover up for you. I, so I guess what happens is, hang on, I gotta scooch my chair in. Um, what happens is, is when I cycle through like dark mood, so the last one, like the dark academia or dark, just because that, that one, that mood was like dark, disturbing, like kind of, you know, uncomfortable kind of feeling into a, like a sad, melancholic kind of like, you know, a little hermity, I guess, you know, cause we're in Virgo season. So a little bit hermit vibes, a little bit hiding, a little bit like, you know, throwing your hands up, like, eh, you know, what can I do? So when I go from, I go from the out of dark mood into a different mood, often, often the switch over is to like funny. So like, I want to like swing the pendulum completely the other way. Um, and, and like, you know, cheer myself up. But I guess this is sort of middling before I get into like funny. Cause usually if I'm watching something really dark, like a dark crime, true crime documentary, then I'll like follow that up with watching like stand up comedy or something to like lighten the mood. But I'm not there yet for the comedy. I need, I'm still in this like middling melancholic place. And I've not been, watching so I've not been really watching any shows to fit that vibe more I've been reading and I'm like I started a bunch of books that were that felt too dark and I'm like I need a break from dark right now I'll go back to that though but I'm <laughs> so I picked up a book that is an <laughs> Sorry, it's so hard for me to explain things sometimes. Okay, let me get my words right. When I was a kid, I guess I was a kid, like in middle school, we read V.C. Andrews. And many of you, I'm sure, know what I'm talking about. V.C. Andrews, the Flowers in the Attic series, the Heaven series, My Sweet Audrina, like all that stuff. You might still think that this is the dark, disturbing, but those books maybe are, but because... <laughs> Cause there's like there's I mean flowers in the attic the if you don't know is a, the premise is that these four children were locked in an attic for th over three four years but their mother like kept them hidden away in this room and attic in their rich in her rich parents home um, it's so weird to describe flowers in the attic anyway so it's disturbing there's like you know. It's, it's sad, it's haunting, it's, you know, tragic, but it's also like, I don't know, for me, those were books that like I just read gobbled up when I was younger. I probably should not have been reading that at all when I was like in middle school, but I feel like we all were reading that in middle school. Anyway, so apparently, I mean like V.C. Andrews passed away a long time ago, but there was, there's been ghost writers that have been writing under her pen name for years and years. And they carried on with series that sort of like, just like kind of repeated the same, you know, sort of tropes, I guess, and followed the, you know, the, the way that the, her actual books that she wrote. Anyway, long story short, too late. <laughs> I found out that there is a series that carries on the flower flowers in the attic and the book is called uh, Secrets of the Attic. It's Christopher's Diary. Christopher is one of the oldest child um, from the flowers of the attic and uh, so apparently in this book, Christopher's Diary, it's like whatever, decades later <clears throat> and relatives like distant relatives of theirs just had this girl happens to be her father's in construction it's like ridiculous her father's in construction and they are return they're returning to foxworth hall which is the scene of where the kids you know the 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 mansion right where the kids were locked in the attic and 
um, it has burned, it had burned down. It burned down twice in the stories. Um, and so the second time of, ha of it having burned down, the, her father's in construction, he's doing something and she ha just happens to be like a distant relative on her mother's side of the, of the, you know, that family. And she, they fi she finds the diary. I'm not, I'm, that's kind of where I am right now. Like just getting into Christopher's perspective, which I think will be, it's cozy. So here's why it's cozy. If you're like tired of listening to me now, sorry. It's cozy because it's revisiting like these books that I know really, really well. Like I read the Flowers in the Attic series. I watched there's some really bad movie versions of Flowers in the Attic. There's a few. Um, and uh, there, you check them out because, like, it is a good time. That's comedy. Unintentional. Unintentional comedy. But anyway, um, so it's cozy for me because it's, like, sad. But it's, like, I don't take it too seriously like I would, like, a true crime documentary or whatever. It doesn't, like, you know, like pierce <laughs> pierce the heart <laughs> i'm just so lame right now sorry but it's it's you know it's like it's like kind of funny but like kind of melancholic and it's like a it'll should be an easy fast read for me like in between some of these other books that i'm reading i i talked way too long about that book um oh something else i wanted to mention um music wise is and i'll i'll link it down below my family and I, we've been watching a YouTube channel that's like music trivia. It's like, it's like, you know, um, guess that tune. It's like a name that tune, guess that tune, name that tune, name the song. And it's, um, Mad Mardigan's trivia. And Mad Mardigan, if you don't know, is a character from... Uh, Willow and that was a movie from when I was a little kid. Oh my god. Love that movie. Val Kilmer played Mad Mardigan. Oh my god. Anyway Willow um, So I haven't watched that recently at all, but Mad Mardigan. So it's like a Jeopardy style trivia game And we're not like actually keeping score um, But it's just like, you know, it's a Jeopardy style trivia game for music and my my daughter and um and Sean and I we have just been like loving playing this anytime you know where we get to hang out the three of us. So that's another real cozy vibe. I have to admit, I'm kind of I stalled out on my puzzles, although that is definitely a cozy vibe puzzles. So look, I can tell you about decks now. I guess I'm sort of rambling all over. But that's okay. That's what we're doing today. That's the thing. Um, because you just, you, you follow the mood, guys. So let me show you some of the decks. Okay. <laughs> um, it's not exciting. Maybe to anybody else. I'm trying not to, like, slam things down. I probably did slam that one down. This is my little baby pocket foth. And I have had it in my bag at work. Look at how teeny. I've had it in my bag at work and I've been pulling a card, you know, whenever. There's no rhyme or reason, right? I'm still, the whether it's dark vibes or cozy vibes, I'm still in the place where I am. I'm not making plans. I'm just following the mood. So I love this <laughs> little guy. It's just, it's been so fun. And I've often been like just pulling one card and then also looking at the card on the bottom of the deck, which is, that's a fun vibe too. Oh, the hermit. <laughs> yeah, we're at the end, at the end of Virgo season, we're almost going into Libra season, which is, oh look, Libra, <laughs> Libra season adjustment will be um will be a completely different vibe but who knows i don't like I, I i realize that my vibe is sort of following like seasonal energy but i think that's just something that is so regardless of where you live in the states it's just ev like everything like consumer wise media wise just sort of starts to lean in that way 
which kind of sucks when you live somewhere hot and then like you go to the store and it's like all coats and sweaters and stuff and you're like hey we don't wear sweaters here I have like a couple of hoodie sweaters for the two weeks in January when it gets cold. <laughs> um, okay, here's another vibe. So I've been, here's another vibe, here's another deck. So in the last video, I told you that I was getting into Lenormand and the Malefique Lenormand is great for the, um, for the dark vibes. This is um, Don Michelle's Rusted Lenormand that she uh, gave me. And it's available on Make Playing Cards. As I'll always leave you guys links below. But her, oh, it's like upside down. Was I studying? I can't remember what I was doing with this now. Um, I must have had it in order and then I started working with it. So this is definitely cozy Lenormand vibes. I haven't paired it with anything yet. Like I did the Malefique. I was pairing with... Um, Barbara Walker, like I showed you before. Um, look at that stars card, isn't that great? Coffin, anchor. Oh my gosh, another, so I also just like recently pulled a muscle in my neck and it was just like, I just felt like a big, <laughs> I just felt like a big whiny baby. And I, the Lenormand cards that I pulled, um, because my partner was like really sweet and helping me. I pulled the the, the man card and the, the heart card. <laughs> and he was like taking care of me and like getting me medicine and like massaging my neck. And he's just like the best. Um, so this deck though definitely fits this vibe. I only have I only have two Lenormand decks, so it's either dark or cozy. <laughs> Those are my choices. I need to get, I probably need to get another Lenormand deck to fit the vibe. Um, but yeah, I'm still working with Lenormand. I'm still just slowly pulling, two, you know, just slowly learning, pulling two cards a day and trying to understand the combinations which i think is the coolest part of lenormand it's also just really cool because it's so different than tarot to me and i like that i think that was a good you know segue or a good way for me to like move on from my like overwhelmed feelings um another deck that i think a lot of folks are working with right now um is the seasons of the witch maybon very cozy it's you know you guys this orange brown end of summer vibes but maybon maybon is the fall equinox right am i right about that oh i'm pretty sure these decks the seasons of the witch some of my favorites um i didn't i, I struggled i struggled with the i struggled with the ones that are um not maybon so this time of year, so Maybon, the Samhain, and the Yule Oracle are the ones that I've most frequently used. I use Beltane. I still just haven't gotten into the Imbolc one that as much. And Litha are the ones that I own. And then there's the other two. Um, did I get Lamas? And Ostara? So I have it, yeah, there's a couple that I still don't have that I have to get that I want to get. Um, so yeah, cozy, super cozy. I think that the guidebooks for these decks are really good. Um, not the entries so much as like the other material. I, I guess what I'm saying is, is the spreads, the spreads in, um, in these, in these guidebooks are my favorite thing. I think about them and it's what it's one of the things I often use so I mean there's so many different ways to use Oracle decks you can use it as a daily draw um, one Oracle one tarot some folks like to use or this these type of decks for like a nighttime reflection um, I've done I've done both of those things with the seasons of the witch but I think I really do think my favorite thing is to to do the spreads 
and I've been um, I've been doing them over time. So let me show you some of them. Uh, interview spread, I definitely did. So two card spread, this is what I did yesterday and I liked, I just grabbed light shadow. I mean, that's not like, that's not like groundbreaking <laughs> necessarily. Like that's, you know, not just in this one, of course. That's an, that's, this is their like Celtic cross. Um, falling leaves I've done, darkness falls, the molasses spread, I like that. The elderberry spread. I want to do this one. Um, I haven't. Oh, no, I did do this one. I liked it because it's like a two-part spread. And a maple tree spread. So maple, maple tree, maple tree spread. But I like the, I like the spreads. I, I do. In all of these guidebooks, I really enjoy them. What was I saying, though, about, I was going to tell you something about the spreads that I did. Mer. It's gone now. There goes my memory. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. So it seems weird to do just like an oracle only reading. And I don't think I do that with any other deck, really, except for these Seasons of the Witch. Um, tell You guys tell me about it. Tell me about your... Um, or like practice with oracle decks. Do you do oracle only? And if you do, what decks do you use? Anyway, maybe I'll make another video about that <laughs> sometime. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like these cards should answer the questions in an oracle only spread, right? In their spreads, but they just really do for me anyway they make sense um i wonder if if you guys have had like a similar different experience okay so let me put this this one away um so seasons of the witch maybon it's got that cozy that cozy vibe um that i've got going on here oh and then the tarot decks because i've got like other oracles so this one let me show you this one so okay first of all I've got my hair in there, sorry. Um, decks and bags are very cozy. And decks and Krista bags are the coziest <laughs> because that's, you know, it's crochet. Um, so this is a deck that I feel like nobody likes but me, but I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure that some of you out there or people that I don't even know, oh, that was my card. The Empress. Um, this is the Scorpio Sea Tarot by, I can't remember her name. There's a book that it's like loosely based on that I haven't read. Um, the Scorpio Sea Tarot. I don't know, you guys. Oops, I'm dropping it. Um, I don't know why it's so one of my favorites, <laughs> but it is and it's very cozy. Like the coloring here is definitely the vibe, the browns, you know. Um, look at that mermaid. This might, some people might not like this because it's a mermaid on the Four of Swords. I don't, I don't care. This is mostly like animals and people just very minimalist here, right? Very few of the cards are scenes. Um, I The way I've talked about this deck before is that it's like my cozy, like New England uh it feels like a cozy new england town village on the coast um and there's horses i know that that's to do with the um the book but i have no idea about the book i've just like these characters so this whole village and town and this like it's like a period piece really um what are we talking here like maybe turn of the century I don't know. I don't know. I can't. It. It. I don't know what time period it fits in. I love that tower card. I love these weird people. <laughs> Are they weird? Um. I just love these people. And I showed you the Empress. Did we pass the Emperor yet? Because the Empress is the baker, and the Emperor is the butcher. You know what would have been great is if the um. If the Hierophant had been the candlestick maker, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. <laughs> um, I don't think that this is a deck that most people like just because it's really just like 
you know, um, portraits. It's portraits. There he is. The butcher. <laughs> Wait, she's on the bottom. See? The emperor and the empress are the butcher and the baker. The hierophant is the pope. Like, it should have been the candlestick maker, don't you think? Anyway, if, if, uh, they ever re reissue or do a new edition. <laughs> That's my uh, my input there for that. I love his Queen of Swords so much. Um, so yeah, the Scorpio Sea Tarot. It's it also feels like it's like a like things happened in this town, in this village. Like things you know stuff happened that was sad. <laughs> Nine of Cups. Um, this kid reminds me of somebody and I can't put my name, not put my name, put my finger on it. I can't name it. Is it, it's not like, it's not like Macaulay Culkin or like Haley Joel Osment vibes. If I see dead people. <laughs> oh my God. I am so sorry. That was not funny. Although I did just listen to a podcast about the sixth sense. It's not Haley Joel Osment. It's something else. Creepy kid vibes. But that's not the vibe. Oh my god, look at these little lambs. Six of Cups. That's great. Six of Cups. So, what the heck am I talking about now, you guys? It's The Sixth Sense is not the cozy vibe. <laughs> oh my gosh, the sun is coming through and it's like all kinds of crazy here. Let me see if I can change that. Uh, fix that. That's better. <laughs> That's better. It got a little bit too sunny on one side. Um, okay, see, I don't usually, see, this is usually what I edit out, but I'll leave it in. Okay, so Scorpio Sea Tarot. It's, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make, maybe it doesn't make sense tarot wise to a lot of people, but I love it. It makes sense to me. I have a relationship with these characters, with this storyline, with this village. Um, with all of these cards, this was one of my first decks. I can, you know, and you can see my shoddy edging job because I it definitely leaked over because I used Sharpie, so I did it in like this, you know, blue to match the backs. The backs don't really go. It doesn't really go. But okay, so those that's these are the ones I've been using. But I also have been thinking about these other decks because I feel like they fit my little cozy, melancholic, sad boy music, garbanzo soup vibe. Um, okay, oh yeah. So this is um, a deck that my friend Andy made and gifted to me. Oh my gosh, she, there's like, it's scented. I don't know what she, I have to ask her what she used to scent this because it's like so yummy smelling um I just love I love having I just have it tied like that so this is her oh wow I have it backwards yeah or maybe just that one side um, I'm always a mess this is her um feel your chakras oracle deck that's the vintage version and this is like handmade okay I just have to smell it it smells so good <laughs> sorry um and this is a weird one you guys sorry about that so i'll just like kind of pull you know some of them um and all the backs are different like the feel your chakras um other editions i don't believe this edition is available um but i know that she has them on make playing cards i think i'll link I think a link. <laughs> now I'm rhyming. A link down below. But this is is the cozy vibe for for this time. Um, yeah, I love. Okay, so the way that I use the feel your chakras, I've used it different ways. I what I do, what I like to do is separate out all the different chakras and then do a like you know bottom to top or top to bottom sh like. Sh one from each chakra and see where I am. And then depending on like how, if I'm underactive, cause you can see like, so let me just pull from like different ones. These are not in, I'll just do a couple. My crown is at the top. 
right? Sick roll bottom. So whatever. So that's kind of like, well, let's see, something in the middle, solar plexus. <laughs> so like what I do, and um, I feel like, can you see everything? Is it there? So obviously I do the whole set of chakras and I pull one card. So the middle is if I'm balanced, so that stays there. If I'm underactive, it goes here. If I'm overactive, I move it over to this side. So then I see like my straight line in the middle is what's balanced, which part of me is balanced, which part of me is underactive, which part of me is overactive, which parts of me, my chakras, which I'm not like super familiar in the chakras anyway. This is like my, this is like my gateway, you know, entryway into chakras. And then I'll use tarot, like I'll pull tarot on top of these to kind of get an understanding of you know, where, why, how I can fix it if I need to. I don't, uh, oh yeah, I don't pull for the ones that are balanced. Rather, I pull for the overactive or underactive sides, you know? Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I use the feel your chakras. And I have, oh my gosh, I should have pulled, um, the midnight version, right? Is that what it's called? The midnight, the, the dark, the darker one? That would have been great for the dark moon. And then the regular one is just like, you know, the, the, the original, the feel your chakras is, you know, just like a anytime, <laughs> anytime deck. But this is the, this is the cozy vibe one because this is the feel your chakras vintage. Um, okay, I'm not going to try to tie that on the camera. I have just a couple more decks that I grabbed that I feel like fit the vibe. This is not in a bag. Um, it's in a tuck box, which is funny. I said that like I love a tuck box in one of my recent videos. And people were like, what is wrong with you? And then other people were like, I get that. I get that. <laughs> we're so We're so particular around here, right? All of us have our very specific, you know, um, preferences for deck storage and or organization. It's such a hot topic of conversation. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I hope I haven't been like off center. I think I do that a lot that I have, and it might like drive some people bananas. So this is the Rackham Tarot. I love this deck. It's got the brown, I guess like that sepia tone, orange, oh, I should put that out of the way. Sepia tone, like orange vibes. These are like the dark fairies, but they're still um, cozy. This is cozy to me. Yeah, I definitely, um, I haven't used this yet. I just pulled it out because it's, it's matching my mood right now. And honestly, like I might end up with having used like an enormous amount of decks <laughs> because I'm not making plans. I'm just grabbing things as I see fit. You guys, this deck is so beautiful. Look at that. And it's the perfect little Scarabio deck. Oh, I love this so much. Ooh, bats. That is our, um, is our animal noses. I guess that, that definitely fits both the dark and cozy vibe right that I have right now. So bat, this is from the, I, sh I show this deck all the time, the animal, mm, animal, it's animal spirit, untamed animal spirit oracle. And this is from another one of Andy's decks, the um, animal guide oracle. Uh, so, bat, the words here are initiation, transition. I so feel this right now. And then the uh, this one is, this bat will guide you to conquer your fears. Oh, bat, you're empowering me this month. <clears throat> so, animal gnosis, I've mentioned before, but it's the practice um, as part of Tegan, Cosmic Creepers membership. Oh, this is the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm so all over. This is the little, um, it's like I think a business card stand is what it's supposed to be, but I use it as a tarot stand, this triple goddess. Um, I got it from a metaphysical store, so I just, you know, put my cards, they're like right off camera, and they stay here at my 
filming reading space. So you have bats. Oh my gosh, bats. I'll talk more about bats probably in another, like, another video maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I'm making promises that I can't, I don't know if I can keep. This is the wheel. Oh, I, I really love that. Yeah, this is very cozy, but also kind of moody. Um, sad boy? <laughs> sad fairies? <laughs> sad fairy music? <laughs> what is sad fairy music? You guys tell me if you think. If I'm making sense at all. Look at those dogs. Ooh, a dog deck. No, that's not... I think that's past cozy sad and into cozy comfort, if that makes any sense. I love this deck. I really love this deck. Okay, one more. Do I have one more? Yeah, I have one more. And I don't know, this might seem weird, but it's another, um, feels like cozy. <laughs> it's, um, this is the Druid Craft Tarot. And this is the trimmed version um, that Don Michelle gave me in one of her bags. Now Don Michelle bags, another cozy, um, cozy place. But this is, yeah, look at, I mean, when I look at the difference between how I edge a deck versus how Don Michelle does, it always makes me like laugh. Okay. So that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, this is, this is, <laughs> this is a cozy, this is a cozy vibe because of all these browns. It's just really probably the colorway. Um, and it feels very much, a, I, I really do like the Empress. I know people were tired of seeing pregnant Empresses, but I, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind seeing pregnant bodies all over the tarot. Like, I think it's cool. Um, so, yeah, because like my Klimt tarot has lots of pregnant, um, pregnant bellies that are in, not in the Empress. They're in a bunch of different places. I do, I mean, I like pregnant bellies. I do like just like big bellies. You should just make a big belly tarot for us big bellied folks. I mean, <laughs> there's not a tarot yet. I'm, now I'm just rambling. There, <coughs> excuse me. There's not yet a tarot for fat bodies, big bellies, you know, that I necessarily like. I, I did think about getting the fat folks tarot when it came out again, but then I just didn't because it was, it was too, because every card was, um, it, it's um, like multiple artists. So, which doesn't always bother me, but for some reason that one just didn't hit. Anyway, I do like, I have like my tarot, like my dream tarot, I, I should probably make a video about like the dream tarots that I would love to see me because I'm not an artist or maybe I could be like more visionary in that way, but I want, I want a tarot that's fat people by the same artist with the same vibe. And I also want a tarot that speaks to my culture. So Caribbean vibes, right? Cuban. Um, there is a deck that I got a while back that kind of, kind of did that, but I, it didn't work. It didn't work. It wasn't resonant enough for me. Um, anyway, you guys have seen the Druid Craft like a bazillion times, I'm sure. But it's a, it's an oldie but a goodie, um, and it that's why it's cozy. This is just like a no-brainer deck for me. I don't. I, I love the guidebook. I don't need it. I don't, I know all the, I don't even need the titles. Like this is like cut down to the, <laughs> just the artwork. I don't need the titles. I know this deck. It's, it's, um, it's, I guess it kind of leans more into that comforting vibe. Um, <laughs> that comforting vibe as I get, go past the ten of swords. <laughs> um, I love, oh yeah, I love that two of wands. Um, but it's, yeah, I think it goes past orange into brown, if that makes any sense. <laughs> past orange into copper, moving towards brown, and I feel like that's the, 
like sad end of summer into, you know, sunset colors into like the browns and decay and um, and I feel like maybe there's something comforting there. Not that like, not that like, it's like seasonal for me because it really isn't like, like that here. Like trees are still like, everything is still very like super green and will remain super green for a while. And then things just die and then come back. <laughs> okay, um, let's see if I can do the thing. I've been talking now for a while. So I think, I think I've done it. I think I've kind of, you know, set the mood, giving you, giving you the vibe, the cozy, the cozy vibe, the cozy sad boy. <laughs> it doesn't have to be boy, but that's just what I'm saying. The cozy sad vibe. Um, I don't think I can get everybody back here. We'll, we'll get to Songoya here though, because that's the flavor. <laughs> that's the flavor of, of, of this mood right now. So that's it. I'm sure there was other stuff that I had wanted to mention, but I can't remember now. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little, you know, I don't know if there'll be another part of following the mood. Uh, we're just kind of doing, we're just kind of doing that though. We're kind of following the mood still. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I thank you so much for sticking with me and I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye.